Hey guys, this is Al Heck over at RenderReady.com. It's been a while, but I wanted to share with you a series of tutorials on how to do UV mapping in Cinema 4D using the built-in tools. This first tutorial in the series is going to show you the layout that I use in Cinema 4D, and it's also going to show you how to UV unwrap a bowling pin. A really simple example, but it'll get you comfortable with the interface and all the tools. So the first thing we're going to want to do here is go to Edit, go to Project, no, Preferences and then open our preference folder. Inside of here, we're going to go to library and layout. And on my website, there is a file that you can download. It's really tiny, 77 bytes, and it just changes the layout for a body paint. Copy it into this area, and then once you're done, restart Cinema 4D. Once you've done restarting it, um, go ahead and click this layout tab up here and you should see my new layout right here which is not new it's just a edit to the current existing BP layout uh, body paint layout and the reason why I just is there was a couple issues with the way things were laid out this was reversed it was these tools right here that I added that are really quite useful there's a bunch of tools in cinema it's a default layout that I've never used in a year of doing body paint and so um, I kind of kept the cream of the crop right here as, as Savage would say and go ahead and open the bowling pin by uh, opening the UV map one file and in here we have this bowling pin now if you do UV mesh and show UV mesh this will drop this UV mesh layout onto here and this is kind of standard this is kind of typical of what you get in UV meshes they're horrible they're ugly so so what I want to introduce you first um, quickly are the these tabs up here so these three buttons right here these affect the UVs. This is your UV window. So anything that you affect here needs to be with these buttons. Anything that you want to affect in this perspective tab, this is your object window, I believe, um, or your, yeah, your object view, um, only uses these. So for example, if I select this bowling pin and I select these points, I can move these points here but they're not going to move in our UV tab. Vice versa, if I select these same points and I try to move them, it's not going to work. But if I select them here and I press E and I try to move them, they'll move in this UV tab, okay? So this side here, this side here, very important. Now, uh, why does that matter? Is that right now we're looking in our UV mode. So I can make this square, this big and this is how much of texture is going to be shown in this tiny little square which is why we tend to run into a lot of UV mapping issues is because sometimes we build UV objects or uh, game objects or 3D objects and some areas are completely blown out in size and others have no detail whatsoever so this is how we're going to remedy that so this is the first part I wanted to show the second part I wanted to show is a quick explanation about this area right here now there's a bunch of different examples but overall in my opinion there's two types of projections there's the type of projection that will cut your UV mesh up automatically the kind that does that would be the sphere which now it creates it in a square and how do I know because if I try to realign it you see the edge right there and this one is its own plane right here that is a cut a cylinder if I realign it you see the cuts um, if you go to cubic or cubic 2, very obvious. Box, very obvious. These are all cut edges right here that were done by default in Cinema 4D using a projection. So then there are those that don't cut, which don't cut this pin into different sections, like shrink. If I try to realign it, this top pin stays together and this bottom piece stays together. If I try to do a frontal, same I oops same idea and the reason why you saw this error right here UV island has no property boundary is because if I try to use a cubic like this and it's already kinda created a cut line around it it's almost created a 
fake edge. So when I hit relax, it knows what edges to cut and which edges to relax, and so it does it. But since I don't have any lines associated with this yet, if I try to relax it, it's going to come up with this error right here. Now, when do you use box projection, or when do you, which ones do I prefer? I like the box projection because you could see how this pin is distorted. It's very short. Whereas if I use the box projection, you know what, this is more proportional to what is actually being shown. So if I'm going to do a square building or a rectangular building, I want to use box, usually most of the time. Cubic, you still run into the same issue with squishing, etc., etc. If you have a sphere, use a sphere. If you have a cylinder, use a cylinder. But for the most part, if you're going to use square buildings, rectangular buildings, I stick to box. Everything else, everything organic, everything that looks like a car engine or a motorcycle hood or the hood, motorcycle engine or, or any type of uh, other object that has some shape, has some curve to it, I always like to stick to frontal. And I like to keep it as pure as possible, all one object, and I'll cut my lines myself. So that leads to our next section. Let's start cutting up this bowling pin. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our uh, line mode. And in here, I have a couple tools to look at. Okay, I have um, the fit to screen. If you press this button, let's say you're zooming out big time. If you hit this button, it'll pull you right back into fit to screen. Um, these two are specifically line oriented, and this is a fill option. So we won't, I could show you a quick example of these. Uh, Chris Schmidt showed this on one of his body paint tutorials, really awesome, where you could take this line and kind of draw it out and create an area to uh, highlight or cut. The second thing I wanted to show you is my loop selection tool. I use this thing all the time. If you want to add more loop cuts, just hold shift and get it near the line, uh, the polygon line that you want to use, and it will cut up everything for you. The third tool right here, which is really fun, and it makes facial mapping really easy, is a select fill tool, a UV, what is it called? UV fill, oh, fill selection. So if I select a bunch of these polygons right here, but I don't want to spend all the time getting all these little tiny elements inside, all I have to do is go to this mode right here, which is our polygon selection. I do my fill, I hold shift, select that, and then when I go back to this mode, those UVs are selected right there. It makes life pretty freaking easy. So with those ex tools explained, um, what I want to do is go to my lines, and I want to make sure I have um, some simple cuts right here. What I also want to show is that these two objects are separated. They're combined into one object, but they're actually two different objects. So if I select this object and select UW, I can actually pull this from my bowling pin and you could see how those two objects are two different objects combined into one. So what do we do? Let's go ahead and go to this line mode and we'll start with this top bowling pin first. And then we're going to go to our frontal projection which is going to line up our camera to how we want to see it in the frontal mode. And then we're going to go to relax check on cut selected edges and that's going to choose all the edges that we have to use as our cut to unfold and then we're going to hit apply oh <laughs> i was wondering why so this part right down here has no lines either you see so it doesn't know where to cut that as well that's a good error to have right there so then i can go here select that edge select this edge and then i'm just going to draw a line from here to here good error good error and then I'm gonna go back to my polygon mode select all of them and then I'm gonna go apply and look at that it's gonna cut all of it up uh, based on those lines no errors no issues whatsoever um, now you see how my UV map has all these dots you can turn these on and off by choosing this normal but I really like to see these this really helps me make sure that all my UV faces are aligned and they're in the right direction. So once I have this cut, I'm going to go to optimal mapping. Now ignore optimal mapping and uh, optimal cubic and optimal angle. It's just going to undo everything you just did. 
Um, realign is what we want to do. Now there's three buttons here that I should point out. There's preserve orientation. If I hit preserve orientation, it's not going to change the angle. I want it to change the angle. I want it to straighten out my mesh. And then there's the stretch to fit. I don't want to distort my mesh, so I'm not going to turn that on. And there's equalize island size. So sometimes you'll make these larger than they actually should be. If you keep this selected, when you do the uh, optimal mapping realign, it's going to make sure that your circles are basically the correct size in proportion to everything else. And then I like to add a 1% spacing so these edges aren't completely touching right here. Now, a couple things I want to point out to you, because uh, uh, this is where uh, UV mapping gets a little crazy, is sometimes people point out and say, hey, uh, look at this circle right here. These two, if I hit U and W, should be connected, but they're not. So I'm going to go in here in the point mode and connect it. Don't. Don't waste your time. Just go ahead and back to projection, and if I hit see the canvas, hit frontal, and then relax, and it still has this cut right here, right? So I got to make sure I go to my selection mode right here and turn off cut selected edges. Frontal, relax, now I got a perfect circle. I'm just going to set this over to the side right now because I know I got one more here that I got to worry about. So select these two points right here, right? U, W, and that selects those. So let's go ahead and find those. I believe that's the top of this pin, correct? Yes, and then I turn off cut selection, go to frontal, which it connects everything, and then go to relax and hit apply. Perfect, go ahead and set that over here. Now this one right here, let's go to U, W. Where is this one? Okay, so a couple minor issues there, but okay, so for this last part right here, we want to UV unwrap it. Now, um, one of the things I found was that uh, I was having some issues because some of my points were selected, and in relax mode, I had pinpoint selection, which will pin the points that are selected, which was causing me some troubles. So make sure that no pins are selected, and then go to your polygon mode, and I'm going to go ahead and select these polygons right here, which is his face, frontal, and relax. Now, I have my cuts on correctly. I'm going to turn the cut selection off. I'm going to select uh, my polygon faces, make sure those are selected one more time. And I'm actually going to go to the top view angle. And the reason why is, and I'll show you, if I hit frontal and then I relax it, um, sometimes you won't get the perfect circle. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. But if you want to make sure you always get the perfect exact circle with no distortion whatsoever, you can go to this top mode and do a frontal projection. And that will give you a perfect straight line one way and the other. Um, and then go ahead and make sure you select the, si the, the correct side to move your polygons and move that to the side. Then I'm going to go and select UW for this top section. Um, and then I'm going to go to my polygon selection mode, loop, and I'm going to just turn uh, this one off because I want these separated. Um, and I'm going to go to projection, frontal, and apply, and I'm going to just uh, go to this polygon mode, UV mode, and set this off to the side. And then I'm going to go to U, W. And for this final area right here, I'm going to go to my line mode, and I'm going to attach a cut. Let's go. Let's go ahead and do a loop. Let, let's cut this all the way through from this end all the way to that end. Go to my polygon mode, and I make sure I use cut selected edges, and then I hit relax, and now it cuts those into like basically two ribbons, and then I can realign that and set it any way I want. So now. If I go to my UV polygon selection mode and I hit Command A and then I hit realign but not preserve, make sure your equalize island size is correct and hit apply, that is going to automatically compact everything into the best size possible. Now we're almost done here but you notice how like this bowling pin looks a little distorted. So what I want to do is make sure that I get this projection as, as, as close to the original pin as possible. And the reason why this is distorted is we used a frontal projection from our camera, which is a perspective. 
we should be using it from either a front or a side view. So I'll show you the differences. If you select these polygons and now go to frontal, and then in relax, instead of using LSCM, because this adds a little bit of distortion to make it more relaxed, use ABF. There's less distortion on this. And then when you do your realign, you see how the edge to edge touches, the edge to edge touches. It's pretty much even. So I'm going to set this one to the side and you can see, you can compare these two. They're pretty different in, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Balance, proportionability, something like that. Uh, you fill that in if you'd like. So I'm going to select these polygons right here and I'm going to do the same thing. Frontal, ABF, and then I'm going to select all of them and I'm going to say realign. Cinema, you do the work for me. And that's exactly what Cinema 4D does. It does all the work for you. You have to guide it just a little bit. You have to tell it what to do. But once it figures it out, it can do it all the way. So I'm going to select these polygons right down here. So I'm going to select this cap just by selecting a couple of these and press U and W and you see it selects all those elements. I'm going to butt that back up against where it was so the pin is complete and now I'm going to show you a UV mapped pin. So all you have to do is go to materials, hold your button, left mouse button down on the actual material and drag it up to your pin. Now here is our pin completely UV wrap. Now you're first going to say, well, there's a seam right here. You're always going to get a seam because you're always going to have seams. But the important part is this. This square is the same size as this square, which is the same size as this square, which is the same size as this square. And when we get into body paint, I'll show you how to paint these seams so you will never notice that those are there. But yes, so here you go, a UV mapped pin that we did in a very small amount of time. It was actually pretty fun to do, pretty fun to put together. And now in later tutorials, we're going to do things that are a little more complex, a little more difficult, but using the same principles with all these other tools involved. So this is Al from Render Ready, and thank you for your time.